signature talk, but let's say, let's put it in a topic to kind of embrace everything. So we want to talk about being known for what you love. Because that's what you want to do. You want to actually, even though we are here on the earth, but we are representing God. We are, our whole goal is to bring people to him. We are the light, but we showing people to him through what we're doing on a daily basis. So you want to be known for what you love. And the first thing we do in our life is show love. Yes, we can give them the scripture, we can pray with them, but they want their basic, basic necessities taken care of first. You really can't give anybody John 3.16 if their stomach is growling. You can't really tell anybody uh, God is going to make a way in their homes. Mm -hmm. So you have to be honest. You know, give me something to eat. <laughs> and then we can talk John 3.16, okay? But I'm just being real. I'm just being real. But we want to also, as uh, the young lady said about blogging, we want to be seen, be heard, and look, we want to get paid. Because... We know if we're a blessing, to be a blessing. But we have to have someone to stay. We have to have something to eat. We have to provide for our families. Guess what? Before we can give it to others. Yes, we sacrifice what God tells us to give. You better give. <laughs> but that's a learning process. But we want to actually be able to be paid. That we can pay our bills and we can pay other people's bills as well. So, all these are different. Um, it's hollering, so is it? I don't know. Is that okay, it's working. There it is, there it is. And, and this is for you, the typo on the slide. We don't do it in the beginning. <laughs> this one, my choice. I put, it's a typo. Always check, check, check. But the most important thing I want you to know is, as I said earlier, we are representing God in our lives. That's the whole thing. If you put him first, guess what? What it says, the word says, everything else will be added on. So that's my human side with the typo. <laughs> so, all right. But I want to tell you a little bit about me, who I am. Uh, because when you listen to people, you have to be honest. You need to know where they come from. You need to, not, you know, not saying what street they lived on and stuff like that, but we're talking about are they actually talking from experience? Are they talking from book? Are they talking from both? Are they an expert? Are they a guru? That's the word they use nowadays. But I am, this is me, I am an anesthesiologist. And guess what? I thought that was my purpose for 14 years. For 14 years, I would put people to sleep and wake them up. I have to do A, B. I thought that's what my purpose Keeps going on and on. Google Plus. 
And the new one is Periscope. Anybody on oh Periscope? Oh I love Periscope. Oh you know I love Periscope because, you know, oh my, my camera, uh, <laughs> my team really likes when I light up when the camera goes on. So I, Periscope is good. It's, I mean, just hit the button and start talking. It's all over the world. But I had to do that in the medical field. You know, I'm bound to you know, hip or hip or I, it's not like I'm going to get on there and talk about a patient anyway. But I wasn't in social media. So with the book, you have to market. You have to get on there. You have to help people out, give them advice. Because guess what? Value equals what? Trust. So people are not going to buy from you if they don't trust you. Now, it's different when you get way up there. And we'll talk about Oprah and the things that she has and, you know, inspired me and her from her platform. But it's different when you're already up there. But if we try to get that ladder up, you have to give, give, and give, and give. <laughs> okay? But I'm actually, as you said, one of the speaker and author of several uh, other books we'll talk about. Uh, and then uh, I'm a host of Good Deeds Radio and Television Show, which is based here out of Atlanta. But the main thing that I do, I help others share their message with the world. That's, that's, that's why I'm here. It took me a long time to get there. So don't be upset that you don't really know what your purpose is. You'll fall into it and you will propel yourself into it. But let's talk about, as you said, what is a platform of building? And I have to be honest with you, I, at first I was, uh, I wanted to talk to people about grief because that was so hurting to me. And I wanted to tell people how spiritually and practical how you go through the process. Don't get stuck. Can't get stuck. We have to move forward when you have that light bulb experience that you know your family member wants you to enjoy life. That's when you actually can move forward. But if you get stuck there, that can last a long time and you can actually become depressed, anxiety. Some people try to hurt themselves or others. So I say, okay, what this platform about? I want to be a passion and purpose coach because people didn't want to hear about grief. <laughs> I couldn't get booked many places, but churches pretty much for, for grief. Because you know in society, people will pay for what? What they want, not really what they need. Okay, Mason's got a one-day sale today. So, you know, I already took care of that. <laughs> but we're going to buy what we want right. instead of what we need. You know, I'm just being real. But that didn't make me feel, I felt funny, empty inside. You know, the discernment is there, right? All of us have that. I said, something's not right because everybody, all my mentors, all my coaches wanted me to do one-on-one -on -one coaching. That's the, that's the normal thing that most coaches do. They start with one-on-one -on -one <coughs> to get your testimonies, then you go to group. But I wanted to be odd. Lisa, I wanted to do groups first. And then, okay, if someone wanted me one-on-one, -on -one, we can handle that later. Because I'm just used to talking in a crowd. So anyway, that didn't work out. So my niece, to listen to your kids, mm -hmm. listen to the young people. We were at the mall, which I already referred to. I'm going to hang out with them. And they were doing a fashion show. And my, we were talking, I was telling my niece, they young. We're talking 18, 16, 14. They young. And I said, you know, they said, what's wrong with Renee? Because you, I'm always bubbling. I said, well, I don't feel good doing this one-on-one -on -one and passion and purpose coach. And then they were about to come with the fashion show, and my niece said, you know, you always connecting people. If somebody needs a photographer, you say, oh, I know this person. If someone has written a book, do this. If somebody needs an editor, I connect them. If somebody needs medical advice, I said, well, let me tell you about this doctor. But anyway, what I'm saying, then my other niece said, that platform looks nice, that lady's stepping on. And so my other niece all together said, you are a platform builder mm. oh, from man. the kids. <laughs> and I was like, that's it. <laughs> so, of course, I wagged my team out, changing, had to change everything. Had to change, and branding, had to change all my brand. I had to relaunch that, because everything has to be in the spirit of excellence, right? But I felt whole again, and everything took off like wildfire. But I had to go through that to get to that, right? So, but platform, as we know, is a raise. You know, you're going to raise people off the surface. But what you want to do is you want to help people stand. You want them to stand. And it's okay for people to model you and do things exactly like you do. And, you know, but I, I, can I be transparent? I had to get over that. 
okay? It bothered me initially when people would take my same, the same post that I put up on Facebook and just change my name to their name. I had trouble with that. When they took the same graphics I had and just changed it by right. a little bit. That, that bothered me. My graphic designer said, well, you know, this is copyright. So we had to say something about the copyright and stuff. You had to say, you know, you have to do what's right. But that, then, you know, my mom said, well, think about it this way. You know, we're supposed to look at the Bible first. We're supposed to be right, just being real. But guess what? You are helping other people. You are impacting other people. Okay? So by you impacting other people, it's okay for them to model. You're impacting others. So think about you are working unto God. So that's the most important. So people can build upon. And so we're going to move it because I think I'm. But over. I had an opportunity being on her platform, and 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 that's she she she's okay. She said with people modeling her, but of course you got to don't just put her logo on everything. <laughs> you know uh, she don't want that. But she actually says, "Won't you do what's inside of you, and everything else will follow." And we have to do that, okay? And that's was her tour that came in town. But we want to talk about. You desire to help people see hope. And what is hope for the world? You know, that's what Jesus said. We want people to know what to do. But we have to make sure we have peace, okay? We got to make sure we have joy and we love. That actually should have been the other way around. Love should have been first. <laughs> you know, love. But we have to know what our passion and our passions are. Because if you know your passion, your passion will propel you to your purpose. Okay? Now, I'm like you. We're going to have to have some activity and interaction. Now, we may not take three minutes because you guys know this. You, you're, you're in the right place. But write down a couple, just one or two, if you have more that you can think on the top of your head of what your passions are. And while you're doing that, I want to just tell you what a passion is. A passion is something that's easily achievable. It's easy. You don't even think about it. You you just, next thing you know, you're doing it. Just think about half people that fix hair. All of a sudden, boom, 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 you sit down, you're beautiful. You're like, how did you do that? But it was easy to them. Writing and editing the grammar, that's just a second nature. But then I'm up here saying, okay, do I use was, where, that? What do I use? That's why we go to the expert to find out what we need to do. It's, it's something you dream about at night when you close your eyes, you think about it. When somebody tells you to do a meditation, oh, I'm thinking about speaking in front of people. I dream about speaking to all these people. Easily achievable. Now, we got to do the research in the book. You got to make sure you educate to show yourself approved. We got to do that. But easily, do anybody want to volunteer? Tell me, tell me your passion, what you're passionate about. What makes you burn inside? What makes you want to just be happy and jump up? Now you got to be quiet. Anybody want to volunteer? Okay. I'll, I'll volunteer since I haven't been here so long. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have to say the passion would be helping others is, is first and foremost. And typically if, if being able to help someone uh, or hearing that discernment of a problem, have a tendency to kind of start talking and don't know when to stop. By nature, I'm pretty much quiet, and most of the ladies and guys here know I don't say much. But when the time comes, that's when I talk. But then a lot of other things kind of tie in with that. That then ties in back to the writing mm -hmm. and then the music. And at some point, I'm still trying to put that puzzle together. You know, but I know it's there, but it's just a matter of how does that puzzle fit together to become the, the masterpiece. Well, I, I can tell you from experience. Uh, I've had so many coaches as well tell me master one thing and then go to another. If you look at um, the awesome things that uh, you can, uh, Eleanor, what's her name? Ellen DeGenerate. She's an awesome one. Uh, uh, Mr. Oprah, of course. Uh, Tony Robbins. They actually started at one thing and then they expanded to a lot of things. But you know what I've noticed? And I had to go with what was inside of me. Everything that God has given me has its own place in my life. 
And I don't get tired. I don't get weary doing it. So that's what I keep. Now, I know y'all don't fuss at me about the, the three books that I started and hadn't finished. <laughs> that season is coming back because that's a signal because I'm here. You know what I'm saying? So you have to have that uh, go with the, you know, I hate to say it like this, but like the kids say, go with the flow. Mm -hmm. You have to go with that discernment. And guess what? If you really think about it, everything you're doing has a certain little compartment. And you actually can make all of them work together. Because I never thought I would be able to do I never thought about media whatsoever. But guess what? I'm able, people book you for speaking when you have other platforms, when you have a blog, when you have a book. Because you're speaking on that book or something similar in that vein. That's how you actually expand to different backgrounds. Now I'm able to, I try to, if you ever <laughs> follow me, I rarely say things on social media about medicine. Because that's individualized. Mm -hmm. And I'm not working in that hat. You see? So you got to be educated in what to do and not do. Anybody else? That's awesome. Great. Yes, ma'am. I have had stories floating in my head since I was four years old. Mm -hmm. And they come to me during the night, during the day. I have notebooks full of slips of paper with pieces of scenes and characters and whatever and for years it was just a hobby and then I finally began to realize that God would have not given all of that to me because I, I, I meet a lot of authors who go places to get inspired. Mm -hmm. I don't have that problem. Um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and what about the other one writing at certain times? And I felt weird because I could pretty much write any time. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, and so for me, it was just sneaking away and writing just because it was fun. It was a hobby. And I kind of began to realize, you know, I need to make money doing this. This is what I love doing. What I do for a job is not, it's something I, I love too, but it can take up so much of my time that I can't do the other. And I have, I have had God speak to me through so many different books. They weren't all Christian books. Some of them were different kinds of novels, sci-fi novels, fantasy novels, but God can speak to you through any medium yes, that true. you yes, are, are bringing into your life or that you are drawn to. Wow. So I realized God can speak to me through these books and I can speak to others through his message. And you can find ways to put that in there, even, wow. if, that, even if it's not the particular Christian arena that that book goes in, or genre. Yeah, amen. Anybody else want to... Yes, yes, sir. Um, science fiction writing that features minorities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, it's a passion of mine because um, I love science fiction, but all my favorite authors, um, H.G. Wells, Jules Verne, mm -hmm. um, Phil K. Dick, um, if you think of like a lot of them, um, I mean, yeah, obviously Octavia Butler, but um, beyond them, there's just, beyond her, there's just really no people of color in science fiction. So for me, you know, the students I teach, I teach 10th grade, um, I think it does a lot for them if they see somebody who's like them or looks like mm -hmm. them being featured instead of being like a sideline person. So um, it's all, it's, I think it's beyond a passion for me. It's become almost like I'm being compelled to do it. Mm -hmm. um, Jack will tell you, um, we, we our um, critique group meets, um, pretty regularly, but I can only make um, make it once a month. So she asked me for chapters. I handed her chapters four through seven. And that was Tuesday, and I'm on ten now. And last night I w I couldn't really sleep because there was just stuff going on in my head, and I, I like I have to get it out because if I don't get it out, it's just going to keep coming, and that's going to get worse. Um, so that's what it is for me. And because he found it, he found where he belongs. That's it. He belongs in YA, science fiction, so he knows where he belongs. But he wrote his first book before I ever met him. And if you could read that and read what he writes now, we are lightning years ahead. Wow. Thanks, Jack. <laughs> and, 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 and let's just say this no, when you get in your purpose things just I mean it just you can't even keep up with it and then the thing is don't worry about it because always God always sends somebody to help you he always sends you a team person 
Like I was saying about website. Oh, no, no, no. I have to stay in my lane. Certain, <laughs> you know, I'm just being real. You have to stay in your lane. Yeah, that's awesome. Actually, I got some info for you about that. that I, it's a sci-fi group downtown that, that's having a convention downtown Atlanta. So I'll let you know about that. Uh, what makes you happy? That's what we're talking about. And we talk about happiness. You know, I don't want to bring the medical side in, but that helps your blood pressure. <laughs> it helps your, your weight control. It helps so much to be happy because you don't, you're not stressed about where the money's coming from. You're not stressed that I'm offending somebody. Okay? So, like you said, helping others. Uh, you you got to be able to give back. Uh, it, it doesn't... Uh, I, I went to um, Sarasota, Florida a couple of weeks ago. It's amazing how big those yachts are. But I got to talking to this older guy that was 98. And he was just talking. God put on his heart to talk. He was just talking about the different things that charities and different things that he gives back. He gives, you know how he says uh, with the tithe 10, you know, then 10 save and, you know, 80, uh, you know, do your other stuff with. He's gotten to the point that his is 50% of what he makes goes to charity. I said, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, you know, because he's been managing a good steward of his funds. That's what I'm talking about. But helping others, that's very important. Very important. But we need to, as we said, eliminate a need. Some people don't have clothes. Some people don't have a place to stay. Some people don't have the things we take for granted. I mean, even especially in the United States, we can say Jesus, God, openly. So many people in different countries, they can't do that. They get persecuted. We see it on the news. We see it all the time. So we want to make sure we do that. And then... My girl, I'm going to mess with you the whole time. And she said she won't make profit. <laughs> yes, yes. And that's what we need to do. We need to, there's nothing wrong with making money. The motive, the motive is right. The motive is we're taking care of our needs. And God wants us to enjoy the land. And we can be a blessing to others. So, all right. You know I love, I'm an apple for that. Not, you know, they don't pay me that. <laughs> but, but what do you think about when you see apple? Anybody? What, what comes to your mind? Electronics, mm -hmm. computers, Steve Jobs. Yeah. But do you think? Do you think the that they doing a great job in their branding and okay. their sales? Revenue is nice, yeah. more nice, isn't it? But guess what? All these things and the things that you're doing is very important. Now I know you guys have talked about. It. You know, um, you know, I'm a publisher as well. You have to make sure. You're doing things the right way with your books. Uh, and, no, and I'm not offending the wonderful editors, because I, I pay them to just get up, stay on my back. <laughs> I pay. But the thing that I'm saying is, as a publisher, any publishers? Any, maybe you can attest to me. The easy part is getting the book, isn't it? That's the easy part. The hard part is, now besides my family, the people on my street, <laughs> I feel that church. I mean, Oh yeah. yeah, I, I delegate. About. No, no, no. You okay. gotta get something. You, they gotta buy you. Sell it. You have to sell the book. Marketing. Marketing is the hard part. You can write a book. You know, people. They, they got. This is time consuming. It's writing. And you need to start. Question: When do you start marketing your book? Before. 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 And get an engagement, and guess what? Those are the people that you can come back. Oh, my book is about to release. I'm about to, yeah, book launch. You can do it virtually. If you guys not in the virtual book, y'all doing virtual book tools? Okay, we got to read about it. Okay, <laughs> we got to, we got to, and, and, and that's my little saying, get it, get it. We got to get it, get it. Because people, you want somebody in New Zealand to buy your book. Not just here in the Atlanta area. And uh, we got to do that. The, the tele-summits, tele-conference. Okay, we, we, okay, I got you. No worries. <laughs> God send people when it's needed, right? Mm -hmm. So we got to make sure we have our design. We need to make sure we have the right like, symbols. You, you follow people that has it right, that's making money. Apple, Chick-fil-A, mm -hmm. Oprah, T.D. Jakes, you know, Joe Osteen. They have people, they paying all, a, me, a lot of money for marketing. So we're going to follow them. We may not have the same, we can't do all the things that they do, but we can start. That's the thing. We 
have to start. So I love Apple. And then, of course, when we do the right thing, we will make a difference. That always works. Now, what's, what's exciting about this picture? The dog. I know. <laughs> but it's something common in everybody. It's right right right. Right. Even the doggies. Even happy. the doggies. Right? <laughs> the doggies happy. Guess what? The things you do on a daily basis and your purpose, you have to solve a problem. When people buy from you and you are solving a problem, your book, somebody else thinking the same thing about you. The poems that's inspiring somebody. The things that you're doing. Now people want to know what to do after 50. That's a big thing because you know, that's coming pretty good quick there. <laughs> so I want to know what to do after 50. <laughs> okay? So we need to solve a problem. If you're able to solve a problem, especially if you're going on to coaching, if you're a motivational speaker, if you're on a record, I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Let me throw this out. If you're on somebody else's platform, guess what? It's not about you. You're on their platform, so you got to go by their rules and guidelines. So pretty much they don't want you to come in, oh, buy my book for $12.95. They, they want you to show who you are. Gain value. and when the, If you have value, people, oh, I need your website so I can buy your book. You know, people in the United States especially, you can't hound them about buying. If you show value, they're going to buy everything on your website. I've gone to places I've run out of books. <laughs> value, show value, and then they'll, oh, well, we just give me your website, I'll buy it off your website. And that's what you want. You got to give them some benefits. If anyone in here is thinking about being a coach and uh, sort of teaching other people how to be an editor, you got to give people benefit. And they'll buy your program no matter how much it costs. I have some friends that charge $50,000 for a mastermind session for six hours. Ooh, it's always full. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Always. Now, the most important thing is you got to be yourself. I tried to get rid of the southern twang of my voice <laughs> until I went to New York. I went to New York and I was in a restaurant and uh, people were coming to the table, just say something. <laughs> I was like, oh, I may need to keep this southern twang. I mean, I took classes and everything trying to, you know, for media, I tried to get politically correct, but just be yourself. People that's come on my platform has come back and said, Dr. Sun, they didn't treat us like that on, on their radio show. They didn't let me speak my mind. Because what I've done, if the it is motivational speakers, okay, we need to get to that. We, we need to do that. Now, guess what they asking, the event planners? They're not asking for your MP4. They're asking for MP3. They just want to see the hear the flexion of your voice, will you keep a crowd engaged? They know you're gonna look nice <laughs> when you come. And so that's why on my platform, the radio, the Good Deeds Radio Show, I introduce the guests and I try my best, which is, you know. <laughs> but I let them talk and so they can show value. And everybody has said that they have had somebody buy their product after they left the show. And guess what? You can use that and cut me out in the front, put it on your website. You got an instant product. Anybody know what a funnel is? A funnel. Let me just stop it. No, no, in regards of your business. Let me, let me stop and say that. That's not on I want to talk. It seems like I got some problems. A funnel is what all these people making all that money on Facebook and social media. The way, unfortunately, the United States, no, I just say the world. We like stuff for free. Anybody like stuff for free? <laughs> so what you do is you offer a free ebook or a couple of maybe one chapter. Don't get too, you know too much. You know. One chapter of your book. You may do an MP3 or a short MP4 short video short because you know we can't we don't want to look too long. You know that's just our mind. When we go around Chick Fil A and they have our food, we're ready to go. So short. Guess what? They have to give you an email and their name. So they have opt into your network. So the best way of doing it, the way I do it, uh, I got a system that automatically does it. Because I write some motivational things and send out to them. 
once a week, twice a week. Now don't, you don't want to send them an email every day. Right. Because they're going to opt out. It's a button at the bottom with your newsletter, with your emails, they're going to opt out. But maybe once, maybe twice, somewhere in there. But one of them emails is going to be, can you come to my telesummit? Can you come to my live event in Atlanta? Uh, here's the link to purchase. At this time, you it's a sales page. Guess what? Your cook, I have it set on my phone. I have it on vibrate now. But it said, ching, ching, every time I get some money. Thank you. <laughs> 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 ching, ching. I wake up, ching, ching. And especially on the airplane, you know, now we can turn it on as soon as they land. I turn it on. Ching, ching. The lady next to me, what's wrong with your friend? That's that money in the bank. Okay? I'm serious. So that's how you do do free stuff. And I, I can I'll actually talk to you guys about that a little more offline if you want to. Uh, because I have to upgrade mine. Um, you can do, I can throw some names out, Aweber, um, MailChimp, I think, now don't, don't quote me, but I think you can do up to 200 people for free. MailChimp, it's a 2,000. 2, yeah, I never went to MailChimp. And I'm going to be biased. The reason I never thought about MailChimp is because it's a template. Uh, I'm kind of outside the template kind of girl. So I went to Infusionsoft. Infusionsoft is very expensive, uh, but God is good. And um, you can change it up. Because like this at the top here, it's on every one of my emails. Everyone for good deeds, radio and TV show, it's a, it's a, you can change that. And guess what? That same graphic, guess what? I'm using for that. See how you use things in several different ways? Okay, I'm sorry. I got off track there. Now, what is success? Now, people will say, oh, Oprah, what is success? But we know as Christians what success is, right? When if God is with us, regardless of what we're doing, we're successful. But that, that was awesome, though, to be, to be there. Now, we got to achieve, learn, we got to dream your visions to come to life. We have to be inspired. We have to be creative. All of us are creative. All of us have gifts inside of us. You know, two people that write the same sci-fi, it's going to be different. Two people that does anything, it's going to be totally different. Now, how I'm doing, how I'm doing. How, how I'm doing. Okay. Now, this may be hard to read way back, but God has, he has the passion. He's giving it to you. It's already inside of you. We just got to get it. We got to get it out. And you have to believe, you got to trust. That's my thing on, on the radio and TV. You got to believe, you got to trust you gotta walk it out. You've got to walk into your purpose. Because guess what? When you and your purpose, you have to move being my purpose. It's all a team. Like uh, who likes pizza? You know, when you cut pizza, this I can have a slice, you can have a slice. But it all it comes together and around, the moon, the sun. All of us have a piece of the pie, as they say. But we have to walk it out. You gotta walk it out. Now, I'm gonna speed up a little. I'm sorry. <laughs> Three things we have to do before we master the fame. You know, everybody wants the fame and fortune. Don't we? I know we don't want to, supposed to go there. But you want money that you can just give to people freely when God tells you. You want to be on different platforms. We want to do that. Right? We want to, we want to sell all our business. But we got to do three things. Three things before that happens. We got to, we got to believe. There's no way of giving. We can't do, we can't do nothing if we don't believe. We gotta believe. We gotta believe. We gotta believe. Now, of course, I put I put religion, but we gotta we gotta believe that God is there. Is there? We got to. He gonna direct us. He's gonna guide us. Now, the reason I put McDonald's, cause guess what? I, my mom said I was two years old. I said McDonald's. I that young. When you see those golden arches, guess what? You believe that you gonna get some fresh fries. You're going to get a hamburger, a cheeseburger. You're going to get something. And guess what? Millions and billions of people go there and go on a daily basis. Yeah, they get shakes and all that. But they believe. They believe you're going to get what you put in there. And all the other restaurants are the same. But how you, your environment, your family deems what you believe. Now, somebody gave me a controversy about that. They said, well, I don't believe that. But think about it. How you, your perception of money is affecting you right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you had the experience that your parents always were arguing about money, 
if they always say, well, you can't have this money don't go on trees. That's how you perceive money. Now, you have to get that out of your mind because you want money to come to you. You have to make sure you're attractive. That energy is flowing. That that young lady way over there going to say, oh, that, that lady right here, something about her. I can feel your spirit way back there. When you come in the room, people say, something about this lady right here. That's what you have to give off, what you want to receive. So, yes, we have all this, our culture, our religion, our family, things that we have come up with, things that we believe. Sometimes we have to tweak it because some of us, we did come up, you know, kind of a rough environment, rough experiences. But in order for us to attract the million dollars that we're praying for, we have to make sure we believe inside that we're going to do the right thing with it. Right? Okay. Yeah, that was an ouch. We had church. Ouch. <laughs> now, you know how you see I love any movie. Hey, but look, what you can say about that picture? Any word? I love you. Okay. Loves your dog. <laughs> yeah. love He's not afraid of it either. Yeah. They spend time together to get that relationship going, right? Mm -hmm. That dog, he knows that she's going to provide. He knows that when he's on the ground, <laughs> that she's going to cry. And the same thing, unconditional love for my, for my pets. Now, it's amazing. Now they, can, they have service dogs that know you don't have a seizure before you have it. They have, you know. But you have to spend time with them. Guess what? You have to remove those negative emotions, negative things. As soon as you, how many can attest? As soon as you leave church before you get in your car, whatever the pastor have talked about, they will say, oh, that one right. He was just talking. As soon as you make a good grade, as soon as you sell one book, oh, you ain't going to sell another one. As soon as you get your, your report back from the editor, oh, the editor hacked the editor, she's happy. Oh, well, the next chapter ain't going to be right. You got to get rid of that. You know that's the devil. You got to get rid of that. Small steps are very important. Small steps. And that's what I, I'm telling you with the, with the funnel, you go from one step to the next. Next thing you know, you're one of those people they're paying $50,000 for. Top of the funnel. As you go up, you know it's going to get a small amount of people. But guess what? More money as you go up. It works. I, it works. I can tell you. It works. Now, believe. Faith, just to recap. Faith, God is the captain of everything. We trust him that he's going to do what we need. We got to read. We got to study. Because you can't, you know. Can't go out there, as my grandma would say, half cock. <laughs> we got to know what we're talking about. And then, you know, I'm a big meditation person. The yoga, anybody in the tapping? Oh, not that. Tapping? Yeah. Right. Look that up, tapping. It actually, you have different release points on your body. It's, it's, it's usually right here like or here. Right and then right here. It is part of, but you actually do it with your hand. Like it's a tap. And it actually releases energy. From your body. These are energy places. And the serum, I got mine is real here. I got it. Don't do it at the mall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and exercise. Is very <laughs> and guess what you're doing this morning? You're being around like minded people. Yeah. That you have to have someone to push you and someone to keep you accountable as well. When you're doing wrong, tell me when I'm wrong. Now, now, that's what my team's going to do today. They're going to say, if you don't use up there, you, you kind of get your eyes funny or something. He's going to tell me. <laughs> and I had the great opportunity to be with uh, Pastor Moody. He's written a book about passion and purpose as well. But he takes it at a different angle. He talks about, see how we're smiling? When you smile, guess what? Somebody's going to smile back at you. And now you started a chain of confidence that you feel that you can approach the person. And that's with anybody in relationship, relationship coaching or something like that. Now, you get the mean can tell you, if a lady, when you're going out somewhere, if a lady looks funny and she they looks down and she don't smile and they smile, oh, they, they ain't going to send nothing else to her. Because you got to make sure you're not going to get rejected. Am I right, men? Yes. And they all go like, <laughs> but you got to have confidence. You got to have peace. You gotta have joy. Now, just quickly, seven things you need to do to, to make sure you believe. Okay. I, I'm just
just reiterate, you have to make sure that you eliminate the negative voice. You got to transfer your weakness into something good. Now, a lot of people have been through domestic violence. I'm just talking about that one a little bit. Guess what? They are able to help somebody else that's doing that. Not saying they celebrate they were in it. Look at Joyce Meyer, how many people she's helped mm -hmm. from telling her story. So whatever's negative, a lot of times, and I know there's another ouch, that's what your purpose is. Mm -hmm. Something that you've been through that, that hurt. Because you want to make sure somebody else gets the information. How do it? Doing good. Okay, embrace your passion. You need to, this is a big one. It's a big X of your way out here. You have to be your own motivational coach, your own children. Because if you don't feel good in what you're doing, guess what? How is somebody else? You know, when, when pastors go up and preach, they say that the scripture always do an ouch for them first. It has to teach them first before they can actually teach somebody else. And that's what we have to do with our products and services. It's helped us. It actually, you know, the thing is, try not to be, how can I say it in a nice way? Don't jump on the bad wagon to what everybody's doing. Mm -hmm. Preachy. You know what I'm saying? And don't be preachy. Yeah. Yeah, you have to be warm, compassionate, because you don't want nobody to say, dee, 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 you got to do this. That's not going to work. And I'm a big, I learned this here about journaling. you got to journal. Write down your thought. I think I have paper. I'm still old school. I like technology. But uh, writing something down is very, it's amazing. And actually, the medical side of that, it actually releases hormones in your body. When you actually bring something here to here, and it actually helps you remember what you just have written down. See, we just thought we were, that God already knew when he wrote it, write it down, make it plain. But it's, it's, it's really true. Create a vision that impacts others. You know, you really don't know how you really impacted other people's lives. People are watching you from all ages. Especially if, if, if avid social media people here, got on social media. Yeah. Yeah, people are, a lot of people, they won't click your post, but they watching what you're doing. And don't, I had to get over there. Am, am I confessing? It's a way, it's a way of finding that out. I'll show y'all. I can tell I can tell you. You can tell if somebody has read your post and they didn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a way of doing that. But they don't they don't have to like it, but you know you're impacting other people's lives. Now you gotta step out in faith. It's time, it's time to step out in faith. Whatever you don't know, we need to step step out. Find people that know. Okay? Now look, you got a truck. He looking back. He already know what to play. Isn't that amazing little kid? But you got a truck. You got a truck. Got a truck. Okay, real quickly. We got to build positive relationships, and that's what you guys are doing, right? Here today. Positive relationships. And, and I hate to even say the C word. You can't, there's no need to compete. Because we can do the same thing, but I guarantee it's going to be different. Because God put a different vision in me versus he put in you. It's still working together. All things work together. But your plan is different from mine. Both of us can be in media. Both of us can have, have written the same workbook, the same poem. It's going to be different. We're not going to choose the same word. If, if so, you know what that means, right? <laughs> now, you got to throw your hands around other people. Don't be afraid to help others. Don't be afraid. Some people I know, I, you know, they don't want to help other people to, to give them a helping hand because they think they're going to get ahead of them. Don't worry about that. Don't worry. Be balanced. Be balanced. Don't be so preachy, as you just said. Don't be so demanding. Just be somebody's friend. If you want someone to be a friend, you have to be a friend. If you want someone to invest in your products and services, guess what? You need to invest in somebody else's products as well. It goes together, right? You gotta track your track track everything. Be, be be look at yourself in the mirror. Look at yourself in the mirror. And you gotta be responsible. Because we have other kids, have great kids, we have other jobs and other things. You gotta write it down. And I'm a big celebrate person. I celebrate, I love having a party. I love going traveling. You have to make sure you celebrate the small things. Because if you feel like you're not doing good or you're condemning yourself, they say you don't know, you're going to stop writing. That you don't even know what a pad is. 
that you've been writing on. You don't know what a tablet is. You don't even know your password anymore to get on the computer. <laughs> Uh, have you not been? You, you, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so I'm stepping on. I'm doing an out. People will buy. I've said that at least three times in this talk. And I'm saying that for a reason. Because people think when they put their book up on Amazon that the people some kind of mysteriously going to get there. Yes, God does send people. Yeah. But we got to do. We got to do some marketing. We got to do some advertising. We got to invest some money somewhere to get some results. And he actually will give you the favor and the overflow for the right people. He does the increase, but you got to do the planting and the water. Okay, amen. <laughs> That's my other hand. It comes in, though. But we got to walk it out. That's my thing. You got to believe, you got to trust, you got to walk it out. Walk it out means execute the plan. We got to research, research, research. And I've said several times in the talk about social media. Social media is a good thing. I love it when New Zealand buys stuff. I love it when somebody, last week I had a teleconference on health and wellness. A lady from Canada spoke. Another young lady from, uh, I think she's in Virginia. She's on the USA swimming team. How could I? Met through social media. Now she wants me to actually uh, write in her magazine. I got to tell y'all about that, that magazine. You got a network. Got a network. Go to events and just don't stand up here. Stand like this. You gotta talk to people, give them your car. The trick, let me give you a, just a side. How does networking work? Have your car available, but listen to what they have to say about their business. It's all about listening to them. And then you'll see a break, you'll feel a break, and you and then and you say, Well, let me tell you what I do if they don't ask. Because you said the law of attraction is if somebody's telling you about what they do, they gonna know what you do. I mean, if they the right fit now. And then if you get somebody a business card, don't put it up under here and never use it. They've given it to you for a reason. Coaches and mentors, I, I have to say it because I'm one myself. You have to get someone that can push you to your goals in life. Sometimes that could be someone in your family, someone in your network. It can also be with somebody unfortunate that you have to, you know, you have to pay them some money. So who want to read this for? Want to read that? Someone read that aloud for me. We can all read. If we did all the things, everybody, come on. If we did all the things we were ready for doing, we would be able to success in ourselves. Anybody ready? And guess what? The world will come to you. You won't have to worry about money. <laughs> you know I love my dog. He's praying. He's praying too. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Do I have to, maybe 10 minutes? I'm a behind. Okay. This gave me a tradition. I love it. Look at the glasses. I love it. I would be remiss if I don't tell you some tips about media for I leave. Because I am a media personality. And I want to tell you some things that work and don't work when you get on. Because the whole goal is for them to ask you to come back. Right? Because if you come back, that means they like you. That means that your, the ratings went up for that time. That means that uh, they track you also. They know if you got sales increase. See, these big companies have you made. When they send you stuff, they already got a tracking on it. That's me. That's our, our platform, the Good Deeds Radio Show. But I want to just briefly, this is just briefly. I do a whole course on this, but this is just briefly. How you, okay, if you on TV show, what, you got to wear the right things, right? Mm -hmm. Just a clue, don't wear black. Black doesn't do good on you can wear black slacks like I have, but not bright colors. All right. No, not, not them big old prints, ladies. I know I like prints, but no animal print today, okay? <laughs> and, and be careful with your, your cleavage. I'll just be frank. Because you don't want anybody to concentrate here versus what you're saying, okay? Uh, jewelry, not a lot. This is actually a lot for me because you on TV. I don't go this heavy. I just leave the bracelets off. Makeup, you know, not too much, but you want to be... Yeah, you know, just the lights, and you want to be natural. Uh, and we all shine when the lights come on. And pants versus dress. I tend to wear pants. Let me tell you why I wear pants most of the time. I went to my first radio, my first TV show uh, on another platform, Living Day by Day, that's here in Atlanta as well. 
My dad, it was so embarrassing. My dad said, well, the second half looked like your skirt went higher and higher. Ooh. 80 year old said that. So guess what? You know what everybody else probably thought. And it's a Christian show. So I count since then, I, you know, if I know what the setting is, because you never know, they may change the set. It may be a small chair or it may be a high chair. So just be mindful of that. Like men, now we don't have to say much for men, they know what to do, right? But no colorful, no socks. Be careful, because when you sit, you know the socks going to show. And not the real glittery ties that light up and stuff like I've seen it. I've seen it. I'm telling you. <laughs> now, during the show, the two simple things to do, just, you got to breathe. People be holding their breath. I'm like, oh, breathe. You know, I know CPR, but, you know. I know that. <laughs> and speak clear. Just be yourself. Be yourself. And I actually try to coach. I have, sometimes I have to coach people through a show, and that's fine. Now, be polite and be respectful. I'm saying things that I've seen and heard about. Uh, I've had people come and try to uh, take the whole show over in a nice way. I've seen people change my branding. Don't do that. Please don't. If you want a flyer, call the team, a radio show, TV show. Say, you know, I want to put a flyer out. Can, can your team make one or do I have permission to use your logo? Now, the big companies will sue you for that, so be careful, okay? But be respectful. Be respectful. Don't, you know, cut them off. Now, also, this is what I, I talked about this earlier. You don't want to say, go to my website to buy my first best-selling book. They, you need to let, they need to know that you're a caring mother, you're a caring, you're going to tell me what to do at 50, you're going to help me out, you want to know what your poem really means to you, what you're blogging, what you're really talking about. You want them to know about the mission, who you're trying to help. That's what you want to do. And guess what? Guess what the last question is almost on every show. Have y'all noticed every show? Katie Clark, all shows. The last question usually is, <coughs> hey, Steve Harvey, bless you, how can we contact you? Mm -hmm. That's when they find out what to buy from. I know that sounds mean because the whole point is you want them to buy something. But it actually, most of the time when you're on the radio, te television, magazines, it's for exposure. You are paying for exposure. And that's me again. You want to thank, thank, uh, please say thank you. I've had so many people that don't say thank you. You want to know how to come back on somebody's platform. Please say thank you. <laughs> you promote, if they send you a link, please promote it. Send it to your friends, family, social media, your mailing list. Promote it. Because guess what? The link they gave you is trackable. They've already put a tracking on it, so they know if you did it or not. And I'm not saying they track chicken, but you want to you want to help promote what they're doing as well, you know, and social media. You know, media is fun. It's a duty. It's a joy. I truly enjoy having people on the platform sharing what they do on a daily basis. Your testimony is going to help somebody else. And I love and joy that God has entrusted me to actually do that mission for others. Now, I love giving free gifts as well, but this is my little thing I love to say, you got to don't stop. You got to get it, get it. You cannot stop on your passion. You cannot stop on your purpose. You cannot stop on your calling. The reason that you are here on earth. I need you. <laughs> we need you. We need you on earth. We need you. Now, this is the website. You get a free gift there. It's about how you identify your passions in life and to learn more about me and the things that we do. And I also want you guys to let me know if you want to be on the radio or the TV show. The great thing, we're here in Atlanta. The studio is in Conyers. Let's see. What's this? So exit 92? Yeah. It's on yeah. exit 82. We're actually on Comcast 24. We're on uh, All Nations TV is out of Houston. So they actually like this Southern Twain in, fr in France. <laughs> and South Africa and places that we're about to go on um, TV 57 is just opening up. Um, the radio show is live on Mondays and Thursdays. I sometimes can do a special broadcast. We're actually going to do a special broadcast with TV Jakes and his team coming up in the next two weeks. Um, and actually, if y'all don't know any video person in Orlando, I'm, I need a video person for the Pastor Leaders Conference down there uh, at the end of this month. 
But Renee Sunday is www.renesunday.com to get your free information. If you want to be on the TV show, the radio show, we actually are totally booked for the summer. So we actually are taking proposals for fall. Unless you really got to get it out there, we can do a special broadcast if you want. And it's live. We try not to do stuff uh, pre taped because, you know, that energy has to flow. And we're actually on um, 107.5 every morning. And I'm missing one. Oh, Sea Entertainment out of Houston, Texas, and also Praise Factor also. And, and you can kind of tell I like the TV more than the radio, I guess. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, e. Okay. And that's my other. The reason I put this slide in here, to let you know, I also have a platform called Thrive and 365, which is a speaker's platform where every month we have a teleconference or a webinar that people just tell their story. And, hey, you can actually sell products. <laughs> you know, when you do your uh, last, we just finished the health and wellness. People talked about how you're thriving, the secrets of thriving in health and wellness. We talked about relationships, uh, women in business, a whole bunch of stuff. But you actually have 20 minutes to set, talk about what you want to talk about. Uh, get people in the funnel. Increase your email people, and then you actually can pitch to them. A lot of people have been loving it, and it's free. It's free. But thank you.
So they'll have it before you put it on social media. See, it's a way of doing that. See, they feel all special. <laughs> okay? Yeah, I mean, then the next level is usually the money goes up. Okay, so you get the group sessions. We talking almost two ninety seven, four ninety seven. Now one on one is like we talking some grands there. If you're gonna, if I'm gonna hold your hand and take you through the process, usually that tends to be more money, just in a general sense. Uh, and then you just nurture them. Don't don't beat them up though. Don't be sending twelve emails a day and. And don't get offended if people opt out. They do it all the time. Yeah. The big people, Lisa Nichols and all those, um, let me see, who else big like that? Uh, they got 50,000 people or more than email this. That's just crazy. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Your PLR, does that stand for Public Lending Right Program? Public Lending Rights? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Okay, I knew the L just felt funny. Yeah. The, the L. The L felt funny. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, um, right. yeah, okay. Thank you. That's not it. You know, I just somewhat didn't feel right. Any other questions? Anything. I, if I don't know, I, I'm a good Google person. I love Google. I just wanted to make a comment that um, I, what I love about you is that you have accepted that what you have to offer has worked. Yes. Sometimes I think that's very difficult for Christians. We are brought up in an atmosphere where a lot of times it is impressed upon us to just give away everything that we have to be almost like a, a pauper, like the disciples were. But we weren't necessarily called to be the 12 disciples and give up our clothes and everything we have. Some people are. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important as a Christian to recognize that what you have and what you do um, has value not just because of the content and what you're offering. It has value in money. Mm -hmm. You're you worth being paid. If, if I may address that, the, the thing, though, is when you give yourself, I'll take Brian as an example. If you give of yourself, then you, by helping him and then him helping you, it, it comes, what goes around comes around. Mm -hmm. And when you're networking with, say, 600 members of Georgia Romance Writers, or 800, the Atlanta Writers Club. That is unbelievable. You don't even have to think in dollars and cents because that will come. That will come. And that will lift that, do I really be, need to be making money off this? Because it will come to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You just said that. No, no, it will. Mm -hmm. And it'll, it'll overflow. Put it, sit down, press together, run it yeah, I, 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 When I first started, I was like, you, uh, uh, transparent again. <laughs> but I've been transparent the whole time. Uh, anesthesia, anesthesia, I just make good money. Uh, when I lost my job, that, that, oh, I didn't tell you this part. How I ended up getting in the speaking platform, people didn't want to hear about group. Guess what they wanted to hear? The little one sentence I said in that talk. Guess what it was? They wanted to know what I did when I went from six figures to zero in one day. <laughs> what oh, happened? Wow. You went from six figures to zero in one day in 24 hours. And they don't realize, and, and, and I said the same thing. I said, up here, you got to believe, you got to trust, and you got to walk it out. So that's become my signature talk wherever I go, even in corporate America. Believe, trust, and walk it out. And that's what you got to do when you lose a loved one, when you use your pet. When you lose your job, when the people come get your car, that's what you got to do. And guess what? People start buying my books uh, as I get on more. I get so many inboxes, I have to have somebody else to. And I'm not boasting, because we don't talk, you know. But it's just amazing. God has been so good. I, I mean, I, media has taken off. I've been on Oprah Tech platform, the Hall of Fine Arts show that came to town. Black Enterprise, I'm going to be on in a couple of weeks. It's coming to Atlanta. You can't explain how it will overflow when you do the right thing first. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times people have the wrong motive. Mm -hmm. If you have the wrong motive, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work. Mm -hmm. so that's been one of the most um, complicated parts of being, uh, I guess, 
fulfilling your, your purpose and your passion, when you know what your niche is, what your genre is, um, we went to a, a writer's conference in February, Barbara and I did, mm -hmm. and a lady um, promoted, she spoke on promoting mm -hmm. your product, mm -hmm. and that's the thing I struggle with the most right now, is the marketing and promoting myself. I'm not, a, you know, it's having to change the whole way you look at your product mm -hmm. and what it is you're promoting, but she promoted her her writing and her product in such a way that it glorified God. That's it. Yeah. And that is getting over yourself mm -hmm. and, and realizing, you know, if I look at what I'm doing as a huge responsibility to answer God's call in my life. Mm -hmm. But that's where I'm at. I haven't got okay. We could, yeah, we could, you know, <laughs> but because the, the thing about I don't, I try to separate. I'll be I'll transparent again. I tried to uh, one page at Facebook did the scriptures and uh, next page do the stuff that I'm doing. That's not me though. I have to. What's me is I'm I'm a child of God first. Just so how am I doing all this other stuff? So I don't worry about it no more. Everybody know that some kind of way. And I actually had the opportunity to speak with people. I knew that they were Muslim. I knew that they didn't believe the same. So what I guess what I did. I said love. And God is love, right? So no, I got to stand on Visha. I mean, they didn't know that they, because the same thing, we need to show love first. Then we can go into the, and I, I have no way to, to, uh, to disregard somebody else and what they believe. Because if you show love, guess what? They're going to pull you aside and say, you know what? What were you talking about? Tell me a little bit more about that. How can you be so happy? Because everybody want to be happy, they want hope, they want success. They want that peace. They want the, and we don't have that a lot in the world, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So don't, don't do the right thing. I'm, I'm from experience. I can tell you, it's been some nights that I prayed all night, fasted all, to, oof, okay, till I'm like this here. Okay? But guess what? God always sends somebody to encourage you. Not always your family. I have a little pet squirrel outside. Lord, that squirrel always there. Guess what the squirrel does? She come to the end. I call her fate. She come to the end of the porch every morning at sunrise and just sits there. Guess what I learned? I just need to, in the morning, sit there and just enjoy the nature. Enjoy what God has already done for us. And that sets the tone for your day. Meditate. Just sit there, the squirrel just sit there, and then she'll stretch, and then she go. <laughs> okay, I'm just kind of here. Any other questions? <laughs> go to walk it out. <laughs> you got to walk it out. No, it's a, we got a dance coming out on that. Don't, so don't stop. There, yeah, walk it out.
know, one person, to end on this, one person said, Dr. Sunday, for 14 years, you have put people to sleep and woke them up. So what you're doing now, you're still waking people up to their purpose and their call, mm -hmm. the reason that they are here on earth. Mm -hmm. And you got to still do the three things. You got to believe, you got to trust, you got to walk it out. And my little thing I said to you, you got to don't stop. You got to get it, get it. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you.